everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mangu and Grits. Today, I'm actually going to show you one of the dishes that inspired our name, Mangu. Babe, this is this is this is your traditional breakfast. Yes. So I love it, and I know how to cook it, but it's your traditional breakfast. So give the people a little background on Mangu. Mangu, in essence, is the Dominican version of grits. It is mashed green plantains. Um, it is one of my favorite dishes my mother always used to make. Um, she would do it, obviously, for breakfast, um, which you're doing today, the ver breakfast version of it. Um, Colo tres golpes, the three hits. Um, and This is one hit. This That's one hit. This is the second hit. The second hit. And the third hit are the eggs. The eggs, yes. But there's also, an, I like this. This is the fourth hit for me. Stephen doesn't like it. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not too particular on onions. There's a fourth version called Cuatro Golpes, which has um, longaniza, which is a, a Dominican sausage uh, similar to what you would say, babe. It's like a. It's unique. It has like a casing similar to like an Italian sausage, but the texture reminds me more of like a. A hearty kielbasa. It's, it's weird. It's it's not weird. It's I mean it's weird as far as like it's odd for people but that it's that delicious. Have had it, but yeah. it's it's very peppery. Uh, it's one of my favorites. So I I love the cuatro golpes. But the most traditional version of this Dominican breakfast is los tres golpes, which my baby is gonna recreate. Yes, like so this was one of those dishes that I just had to nail <laughs> in order for Steven to not give me grit. So he didn't we're not making grits today, but he didn't start eating grits until he was with me. I didn't start eating mango regularly until I was with him. But trivia, it's not the first time that I had mango. Mm. The first time I had mango was when one of my mom's co-workers gave her some. To try, and my mom brought it home, and I was like, hmm, "What is this? This this smells kind of good, you know? It had the onions, nice and vinegary. I sm it had the butter for the mango, so I said, you know what? Let me give it a try, and I enjoyed it. So that's enough backstory. Let's get into this. So the ingredients that you'll need to make this mango, well, los tres golpes, not just mango, are salami. You saw that I picked this up, right? This isn't the mango, but this is important because a plantain, platano is a platano, a plantain is a plantain as long as it's green. But this, you must get a good brand. Induveca, the brand that we have here, it's so good. I remember we were in Food Bazaar <laughs> yep. the first time that I was going to try to make it myself and we called my mother-in-law in Spanish, mi suegra, called her and said, Listen, we need your help right now. Which brand should we get? Because there are so many different um, brands of Dominican salami. Everyone has their own preference, but for us, Induveca. I would say... And it's, and it's Dominican salami, not Italian salami. Yeah, so you're going to have to go to... Either you're going to need to get this in a supermarket that has a diverse selection, or you're going to have to go to a different neighborhood because you will not find this everywhere. Right? Again... The type of Dominican salami is so important. I would say it's like the equivalent of having a good hot dog, right? And a mushy hot dog. Oh yes. Right, another thing that's important is how this is going to fry because we're gonna fry this in a skillet. If it's not the right consistency, you're not gonna get any color. Or if it's too fatty, it's gonna shrink and look all nasty. Like you, trust me, get this. We are not endorsed, oops. <laughs> And Duveca, get this one. Now, the next thing, queso de freyer. Or is it freyer? Yeah, freyer, freyer, queso de freyer. Okay, I was close. In other words, <laughs> uh, cheese that you fry. Yes, cheese that you fry. So some people even make this into cheese sticks, right? So not like mozzarella sticks, but similar. They bread it, they fry it. But for this, we're just gonna fry it by itself. And it's gonna be cheesy, crusty goodness. I, I have to admit something. When I grew up, I didn't like fried cheese. 
But I never had it until I started having this. Yes, but then I don't. I think it was you or somebody did it for the first time as an adult, and I it's an acquired taste, and I loved it after that. So you know, it's really good. As I said, the platanos. Make sure that your platano is not yellow. If your platano is turning yellow. It's a Maduro. It is a sweet plantain. It's not gonna be appropriate for this. So for those of you who've never had plantains, when they're green like this, they're very starchy. Almost like a potato or a yam. That's why, you know, we compare it to grits because of the breakfast component, but some people also compare it to mashed potatoes because it's very starchy. We're gonna be boiling this. Next, your eggs. We like them sunny side up, but you can do whatever you can fry them hard I've never really seen it with scrambled eggs but do you you know if that's what you like you don't like yolk do you but the yolk adds I'm sorry the yolk adds he has to interject for the yolk the, the creaminess yeah that, that with the mango you mix that together oh lord <laughs> oh lord okay adios mio adios mio <laughs> or as Domin some Dominicans say ay papa <laughs> olive oil we're gonna need this for frying and we're also gonna need this for our mango. Salted butter, we're gonna need this for our mango. Vinegar, here I have red wine vinegar, but you can use white vinegar. I find that apple cider vinegar has too much of a distinct taste to really go for this, but use the vinegar that you have, you never know, it might be delicious. That goes with this onion. So I'm going to quickly fry this onion, add a little salt, then add the vinegar. And it's like a quick pickle. I know people have so many different ways of doing this. This is just how I do it to get the taste of the onions for those tres copes, but it works. Salt and pepper, that's it. Now we're going to prepare our platanos. So one thing that I forgot to mention when I was going through the ingredients is that this isn't just for frying and for the mangu. It's also for us to add a few drops to our hands so that when we are peeling the platanos, the green dye doesn't mess up our skin and our nails as badly. So that's a tip. Saw it online somewhere, I don't remember um, when because it was several years ago, but I found that it really works. So now you have oily fingers. Be careful with your knife <laughs> But let's go So as I said, I like to sharpen this so I'm just giving this a nice little sharpen oh. Again, I'm wiping this because you don't want leftover stone or metal to get onto your food and when I'm cutting the platanos I'm gonna slice the ends off and then when I'm slicing them to peel them I like to go like this across so that I puncture this all the way to the skin I don't know if you can see that Okay, and then I peel. Go like this. Some people also soak their platanos in hot water before peeling because they say that it makes it easier for the skin to come off. But I find that the oil that I have on my hands eliminates the need to do that. So notice again, I'm cutting on the outer arc as opposed to the inner because this is just more difficult for me to cut. Oops, where's the, <laughs> where's the seam? off little holdovers like this and like this so as you'll see for 
for tonight's dinner, I only pulled four platanos. That's because when I'm making mangu, I tend to make about two of these medium-sized platanos per person. So, make more if you want leftovers. Make less if you are washing your portions, but I find the two is just perfect. Look how easy that comes off just because of the olive oil. It's great. Okay, so now I've peeled all four. I'm just going to do quality control to make sure that I didn't leave any skin anywhere. See? A little bit. Okay, so now we have all four. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut them and to prepare them for boiling. To boil these quickly, and also to make it easier when smashing, I like to quarter each one. So you see I just cut this in half, and then I'm gonna take that half, slice it through like this. And again, just to give you a sense of the texture, as I said, this is more similar to a potato than a banana, so you know a banana's not gonna do that. <laughs> It's so starchy, right? I know, yeah. All these little, these are the seeds. Yeah. In the center. But they're not noticeable when you're when you're eating it, just like a banana. It's not noticeable at all. Alright, so now we have our platanos prepped and ready to boil. We have the water on to boil. We're gonna take you into the kitchen and show you that. So as I mentioned, we had our water boiling while we were over there prepping our platanos. Now it's steaming. We're gonna throw these bad boys in here, get our towel. Ooh. So we're gonna drop these in here gently. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we're cooking. Add a little bit of salt, just like you would for potatoes. All right. Now while this is boiling, we're gonna prep our onions and get that going. All right. Add some olive oil. As you can see, I have the oven up relatively, or pardon me, the stove relatively high. Just gonna let this get hot. Now we're adding our onions. gonna sweat these down a bit. You don't want it to get caramelized, but you do want it to be not crunchy like this. So you want them to get a little soft? A little soft, but not caramelized. So I turn the oven, I keep saying oven, I turn the stove down <laughs> That's okay. a little bit. See, I'm stirring it around so that the olive oil is evenly coated. Mm -hmm. And this process is only going to take about another minute or so. See, it's already starting to get smaller. And I'm stirring it constantly because I don't want it to get dark. Okay, now you may notice that the color is starting to fade. That's how I know it's almost time for me to turn this off. It's not as vibrant as it was. Now before I turn it off, 
going to get my salt. Add a little bit. A couple of sprinkles. Give it one last stir. I'm turning it off. And now I'm going to add the vinegar. You see how the color comes back? Mm. And it would do that even if I use white vinegar. And I'm just going to let this sit while we prepare the rest of our food. It'll give it a nice pickly flavor, a bit of acid. And the residual heat from this pan will further soften the onions. Let's check on this. Oh, yeah. You see they're getting a bit more yellow. That's what they look like when they start to cook. They go from like that white pale color My to this. Starting. So our onions have been pickled. They're, they're sitting to the side, soaking up all that flavor. The next step is to cut and fry our salami and our cheese. So helpful tip, before you cut through this, make sure you wash it. You don't want any of that bad bacteria from the store to get into your food, it will decrease the shelf life. Now this is a big, big <laughs> uh, package of salami. I do it because the price is more affordable. We're not going to use all of this unless it's for a party. So I would say for leftovers and enough for us, I would cut here. Freeze the rest if you're not going to eat it within the next couple of days, otherwise it'll go bad. Cutting off the other end here. You see they seal it up old school, right? So this is like one big uh, piece of salami and they put the metal. Don't even try to <laughs> open that, just slice it off. Do a thin little slice to pierce the plastic core on this side. So, true story, when I was a little kid, the first time I made my own sandwich, and I mean like really basic, like Kraft Singles and salami, the first non-peanut butter and jelly sandwich I made for myself, I learned the hard way that my mom always took off the, the plastic around the salami. So I remember eating that sandwich and wondering why it was like so tough to chew. I was working on it for minutes. <laughs> for minutes. It was crazy. Yeah. So I don't know. Just take it. This brought me back. Maybe it was a little traumatic. I don't know. This brought me back. So now we we cut our salami. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces, right? Sachi chong. Sachi chong. That's what we call it. <laughs> now it's time to cut the cheese. Same thing. Oh, actually, you know what? Don't cut the cheese with the same knife that you cut the salami because you'll be integrating like new stuff into it and it'll go bad, so get a new knife. As a matter of fact, let's clean our work surface. As I said, in order to preserve the life of our cheese, because we're not going to use all of this for today's meal, we're just going to get ourselves a new cutting board, which I did, and the new knife. Now, when you're going to the store, you're gonna wanna be careful to, to make certain that you get the perfect cheese. Remember, it's queso de freyer, the frying cheese. Um, there are many different types of white cheeses that look similar, right? There's queso fresco, there's queso blanco, but in my experience, the cheese labeled queso de freyer gives you the best crisp when you fry it. Is that also your experience, babe? Yeah, definitely. Now texture-wise, this is like a cross between like mozzarella and pepper jack, right? It's, it's relatively soft. And you're gonna wanna slice it like this. Now I'm only going to slice about eight, which should be around half of the container. So one, two, three, four, five, six, two more slices. You see the way that's coming out? 
that's why you want to be careful with storing this. I recommend storing it in a Ziploc bag. Okay, so now we have our eight slices. No air. <laughs> <laughs> no air. And sometimes even I get rid of the wrapper and I just put it in a Ziploc bag because you're going to want to eat it relatively soon. I've never uh, put it in the freezer, but I don't imagine that it would do too well. <laughs> you know, this this cheese you can also eat with crackers and like yellow and it's it's like a, you could also have it like this without frying. Yeah, you the same it. thing with the sachichon. A lot of people eat it cold, you know, like on a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I prefer it like, grilled. Listen, even as a kid with that like that red wrapper salami, I always would fry it. Or I ask my mom, hey, please fry it. Like something about frying it and getting that, that color to it, the texture, it's delicious. So let's check on our platanos, start frying the salami first and then the cheese and get moving on this here. Our salami is cut up. It's time to fry those bad boys. Everything's a bad boy. We're gonna fry bad those bad boys. Let's go. Turning this on. I'm gonna add a light coating of oil. Just enough to get the frying started. Okay. What type of oil is that? This is olive oil. Okay. You can use. Aceite de oliva. You could use corn oil, aceite de maíz. Ay, ah! ah! Excuse me. Okay, let's go. Aceite de canola. I don't know. I don't aceite know. Aceite de canola, yeah. Uh, all right. Good, good guess. You got it. <laughs> Let this get a little hot. Watch if you have penny. Yeah, penny be careful shirts. with that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that could be a situation. Yes. All right, I'm feeling it. You feeling it? Feeling it. All right, let's go. It's like when you about to jump double dutch. Got to feel the rope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's add it. Make sure this is centered. It's okay if it's not popping before you put it in. And that's probably better too. You don't want to hurt yourself. And you don't want to like, yeah. Okay, there it goes. It's talking. Slide to the left. No. <laughs> no, it didn't. And it's okay if you crowd your pan. They're gonna shrink anyway, but not too much. Is there room for one more? I see there is. Mmm. So get that little baby one over. All right. That's yours. <laughs> that little baby one. That's yours. I'll take that. That's it. all you, girl. Now, how much you fry this salami is up to you. I tend to like my salami a little bit darker, even. Surprisingly, <laughs> when it comes to South Cheese Chon and Loche Copes, he likes to have it not so dark. Not not too dark. Because then it becomes like, I feel like it becomes too crunchy. I like a little crunch. Yeah, I like crunchy bacon, but I don't like crunchy salami. It's been about two or three minutes, so let's take a peek at our South Cheese Chon and see if it's ready to flip. It's is that your desired level? Yeah, you're getting for there. For me, I like for my middle to be a little. You know, the middle could be a little darker, but I think. Because uh, it's so indecisive. Well, you know. Also, one thing that everyone should be aware of is that depending on how thin your slice is, it might, you know, bubble up a little bit in the middle. So yeah. you're going to want to, like, just hold it down if you notice it doing that. Yeah, press it down a little bit because it does do that. It turns like into a little dome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some people, they put a little um, slice, like a cross in the middle with a knife to stop that. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to do that because I like my salami whole. And like, it's whole, but you know what I mean, like un uninterrupted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, that one yeah, that, is okay, ready now, to flip. That's the, yeah, that's the color right there.
cooking, I went and I grabbed a bowl and I added some paper towel so that we can put our finished salami in here and drain some of that oil that comes off of it. This one is done. Because mm -hmm. it's relatively thin. This one is also done. See one side is darker. It's like a, a reverse yin yang situation. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I don't like how that side looks. I'm just gonna flip it over. Do this so that it gets some of that heat. See, now it's not as inverted anymore. Perfect. Mm -hmm. How's this little baby doing? I like to get a little crispy. I like them a little crispy sometimes. This one, gonna do this. Flip it over. Oh, that one looks really good. Yep. See, look, they're coming out. That one's good. That one is real good. You're going to want to keep your pan hot because that cheese that we cut, we're going to throw it right in here. Same oil. Oops. Turn this down. See, it's starting to smoke. Smoke too long, your oil burns. So now we're adding the cheese. It's going to pop because the cheese is wet. Back off a little bit. Don't worry. Mm. Give it space because it's going to spread. Talk it to me. Talk less. <laughs> and like I said, give it space. I'm spreading this out because I have two more pieces to add. The reason why, again, this cheese is called, called queso de friere is because it maintains its form while frying. Now this is a queso blanco. Yes, that looks exactly identical and it almost that tastes it identical it. yeah yeah but but it, it's not made for this type of stuff you got to make sure it says queso de freire because this is the one that you're going to put like so to cook like you know fry it up let's see how our platanos are doing while this is cooking mm -hmm. yeah, you don't want to yeah so you're going to want to test your platanos with a fork just like a potato if it splits I can't see. Okay. <laughs> Move out of the way. Oh, you saw that? It needs a little bit more time. Okay. Look at our cheese. Now, in one minute, this is going to be ready to flip. This is the easiest one to, to cook. Mm -hmm. This and the eggs. Well, the eggs, because we're cooking it sunny side up, it's going to cook slow. Oh yeah, because we got it. Okay. You want to make sure you, you got the yolk. Otherwise, it's going to be overall fried. But you can make it fry hard if you want to. That's why That's why I'm not the cook in the house. I, I eat. You cook. And I'm just going to make sure these are sensitive. Look at that, how it's getting soft. Before, it wasn't springy like that. And you can see the edges. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Our cameraman just got attacked. It just it just hit me with a line drive of oil right now. So look, you see how this is bubbling over here, over here. Let's take a peek. Almost ready to flip, but look at that. That's gonna be so good. Ooh. I just got it. I just got it. Gonna move some of that oil to the other side too. If your floor is uneven or your stove is uneven, <laughs> that might happen sometimes, and that's fine. Just compensate. All right, I think it's almost ready to flip. So I'm seeing a little bit of color. Yeah, yeah, yeah boy. <laughs> oh yes. See, those two want to be together. They friends. They friends. My best. 
make sure when you flip it, it's flat. Oh, over here needs a little bit more baking time. Ooh. You see how it doesn't like fall apart? Like if this was cheddar cheese it would or, be all or mozzarella, it would have been. It would be. It would be a mess. That's why this is a specific fried cheese, Dominican fried cheese. Do Puerto Ricans have a version of this? Um, that's a good question. I gotta, I gotta research. I gotta ask some of my friends about that. But I should ask. You're right. I should ask my pops. I don't ever remember tasting some sort of a Puerto Rican fried cheese. Dominicans, I guess. <laughs> this was so. Good. It smells really good too. All right. All right. All right. Those look like they're done. Now first, let me turn off our cheese. Yeah, I turn, I've turned it off. Okay. We're gonna let that sit in the pan. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna turn off our platanos. I'm gonna scoop them out. We'll do that. Watch out for steam. And I think I got everything. Getting my favorite trusty pan, my sauteuse pan, which I use for almost everything. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna turn it on to about a four. I'm gonna add a coating of olive oil all over because we're about to do our eggs. I'm going to slowly drop in our eggs. The goal is to not break the yolk. Sometimes it happens. Hmm. Depending on my mood, I might break another egg. Other times, I'll go with it. So, let me break it. Let me break it. Now those two are close together. So I'm gonna put the other two over here. See how, because we have this coating of oil, it's swimming in it, so it's like a gentle cook. All right. Good job, babe. Thank you. Now we're going to do our mango. Hi, hi, hi. There are different kind of mashers. This is just a standard potato masher. A ricer could also work. And because we let this boil to the appropriate amount of mushiness, you see how it's just smashing so beautifully. Look at our eggs. I'm gonna turn them down lower. Wow. Now I'm going to get some butter. I'm gonna add about a half of stick of butter, but I'm gonna do it in pats, four different pats, so that it melts easily. Smash, smash, smash. This takes a little bit of elbow grease, just like if you're mashing potatoes. It's okay if you have some lumps in there. But for the most part, you want it smooth. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm okay with the little lumps here and there. But yes, definitely smooth. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> Take a break from your smashing. Add a little bit of salt. Get back to smashing. Get a little bit more olive oil. Mm -hmm. 
the next thing that I'm gonna do is add some cold water. Now some people I know add some of the water that they boil the platanos in, mm -hmm. but based on experience and my mother-in-law, mi suegra, adding some cold water helps to make it smoother. Something about the interaction of the oils that you already have in there and everything. Let's check on the eggs. Eggs. So I have about a cup of water. I'm not gonna add that much. I'm gonna add little bits. So what was that? Maybe like a fourth of a cup? Smash. Should I turn this water off? Yes. A little bit more water. Smash. You see the consistency oh. is changing. Look at that. The consistency is changing. It's getting, it's getting right. You see, this is a lot of elbow grease required, but it's worth it. You know, my mother used to do this also for lunch. Like, you could, you could have this breakfast style, or we could have it with like some like, meat on the side. I know you probably had it with chuletas. Pork, ch fried pork chops, chuletas, carne mochada, you could put on it. Stewed beef. So I'm rotating yeah. my bowl to make sure everything is getting the proper amount of love. Almost done. One last little bit of water, as you can see. I use maybe three fourths of a cup. Yeah. Oh, that's the consistency right there. Look, it's starting to, if it's like mashed potatoes, yeah. if it's sticking like that, it's good. All right. So. I'm gonna call it. It's, it's done. It's done. But I'm also gonna gently separate these eggs so that when I'm plating, they're not stuck together. So see the natural seams, they just break apart. Be careful when you get to these yolks. All right, so now we have four separate eggs. That was masterful. Let's plate. So now it's time to plate. So I'm gonna get my spoon. Look how your mango does this and it's smooth. You know the consistency is yeah, right. That's on point. I'm gonna add it to here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now, that's it, I gotta put them in here. See? Look at that. Smooth. This is Steven's plate, by the way. <laughs> He's gonna eat some onions for the sake of authenticity. Yeah, for today. <laughs> Is that enough for you? That's perfect. All right. So actually, you know what? I'm gonna make a little dip for the eggs. I'm always thinking about plating, so. Next, I'm going to take our eggs. Oops, that's, you gotta be careful of the oil. So I'll put one egg here. And the other egg, I'll put it here, right? Mm -hmm. Next, give me my tongs. Gonna grab some salchichon. Is that the baby, oh no, that's the other. That's, is that my baby piece? Cause <laughs> I want that, that's mine. Okay, I'm trying to find the meaty one for you. Don't worry about it, you, you got me, I'm, I'm okay with this. All right. Oops. Over here, the cheese. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. You want three or you want four? I'll take three. Okay. And lastly, our onions. Steven doesn't like a lot. Put it like right there. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna put it here. Okay. Look at those colors. 
Ta-da! Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Dominican, straight up, will say this was done by Dominican. This this is authentically Dominican right here. As a matter of fact, my mother-in-law saw the last one that I did. Yeah. And she said, what'd she say? You tell me. <laughs> she put it on the thing. She was like, you Dominican now. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so, here you go. I hope you enjoy it. If you try this, let us know. It's so delicious. That's Los Tres Golpes. Mango and Grits. Mango and Grits. Remember to hit like and subscribe.